Hello, welcome to my December 2022 report on the electrical systems at our property in Huntingdonshire, England, where our latitude is about 52 and a third degrees north, nearer the North Pole than most of the large cities in Canada. This diagram shows the major components which make up the system at the moment. Further details can be found in the description below the video. The first graph shows the daily electrical energy coming into the property from the two solar arrays and from the grid. These figures come from the daily readings of the electricity meter and the two solar generation meters. The maximum value on the vertical axis has been adjusted from 70 to 110 kilowatt hours to cope with a few days of high grid input which we have had during the month. The total solar production this month was 131 units, meaning that the average solar production was a paltry 4.2 units per day. The highest production was 10.6 units on the 8th and the lowest was zero on the 12th when all panels were completely covered in snow. 1,245 grid units were imported in total with 24 at normal rate and the rest at our Economy 7 low rate. The power wall completely discharged on the 12th and 13th when there was little input from solar during the day leading to some normal rate units being imported in the late evening. Later in the month, we made two visits to family in quick succession and the car couldn't be fully charged during the seven hour low rate in the early hours of the 28th. Some normal rate units were imported for a short while, either side of that period, to fully charge the car for the second visit. Eighteen and a half units were exported to the grid, according to the Tesla app, which is 1.3% of the total electrical energy coming in and a rather high 14.1% of the solar energy produced. The solar contribution to the month's electricity input was less than 10%. This second graph shows where the electrical energy consumed by the property and the car came from and like the first graph the scale on the vertical axis has been altered. The figures behind this graph are mostly supplied by the Tesla app with the car's home charging figures coming from the My Energy app. Just 5.4% of the energy came directly from solar and a further 2.7% was solar coming to the property via the power wall, giving a total solar contribution to the energy used of 8.1%. 13.7% of the solar units dribbled into the car via the Zappi charger. Over 311 grid units went into the car, around 12 of which were normal rate, and the car was also expensively charged on rapids away from home on a couple of our long distance trips, giving an average cost per mile of 12.25 pence for the higher than usual mileage this month. This graph shows the energy going into and coming out of the Powerwall each day, as reported by the Tesla app. 88.6% of the energy which went into the battery, mostly low rate grid units, came out during the daily 17 hour normal rate period. And this is the self power graph, based on figures from the Tesla app, which reported that the proportion of self power was 26.2%. The missing part of each bar largely represents the energy going into the annexes storage heaters direct from the grid, and most of the green sections, which is energy coming via the power wall, also started off as grid units. This graph shows the solar southwest production over the years since installation. 44 units was the second worst December during the 11 years, below the month's arithmetic mean of 56 and the median of 54 units. Here is the cumulative by year graph for the southwest array, with 2022 in first place out of the 11 years, with a total of 3,572 units. 46 ahead of second place 2020 when 3,526 units were produced. This scatter graph shows the daily output of the two solar arrays for the past 365 days. The newer southeast array is displayed as orange diamonds with the red moving average line. The older but bigger southeast array is displayed as yellow squares with a blue moving average line. Whenever there is a bit of winter sun during a day, especially of course in the morning, the smaller array produces more than the larger one due to its being mounted on a steep roof and therefore pointing more directly at the low winter sun. Here is the distribution of the energy input and export for the past 365 days, with the vertical axis adjusted as it was for the first graph. 
and this graph shows the daily solar production for that same period. The final graph shows a summary of our grid electricity usage since we moved here. The grey and red lines show the number of low rate and normal rate grid units used each month as measured on the left hand scale. This December has been a month of high import with energy being gobbled up by the car and the two storage heaters in the annex during the cold spell. The monthly electricity bill is shown by the yellow line in the right hand scale and the green line shows the monthly contribution to the feed-in tariff payments which we get for the old Southwest Array's production. This has been our biggest monthly bill since we moved here, despite still being on a fixed long-term tariff with our units costing much less than most people are having to pay at the moment. That's all for this month. I'll leave you with the information laid in graphs from the Tesla app for each day of December and wish you a happy new year and falling energy prices.